something comes into the system, it you know, processes it to determine what effect that has on the rules, and that information stays in there as long as that object is available. Uh, when the object is deleted, then that information is retracted. Yeah. 
10 cards with uh, greater than $2,000 worth of goods in them. So that means that there are 10 possible matches for the first two conditions together. So if we're acting card together, we're going to have 10 moments. And then finally, for act card and customer together, we're only going to have one, one token because uh, if each customer has only one card, and that's going to Was it created in order to be intentionally yes. expensive? Yeah, it was designed to be as expensive as possible. Okay. And uh, first to start out, I'm simply going to add up the two measures we talked about before. Number of tokens in there. Arbitrarily, I'm just going to look at the first five, that is, five worst rules in the system. And, um, okay, the uh, list at the bottom of the rules, and this one was the top of top of the defense rules, you need to stay back class. Uh, start visit the rejection is the function for the rule in this case. Okay, and you can say that uh, the first two there, the first one, Sorry, 77 million. The other one did uh, 67 million. The, uh, other, the next two are substantially counted. <coughs> and then the fifth one is quite a bit counted. Okay. So uh, this suggests that uh, the first two rules are the, are the worst in the system. And in fact, because this rule engine compiles rules into the um, actual job, it gives a Java profiler to find out the error once it gets to the customer. And it turns out the first four are the same as we saw uh, in this one. The simple measurements. And the third one, there's no problem with it's down much lower. So these, these measurements are good for really bad rules but they're not so great. They can't check the uh license rules. Okay. Um, 
distance the, the work tool. It is actually a very simple rule. Uh, if one was reading the, uh, the program, uh, this is probably not one that would jump out and say that this is going to be an expensive rule. Well, it has two conditions, it has two simple actions. It matches two objects and it updates those two objects. Say these rules are inefficient. The guy who originally wrote them wrote them on purpose to be inefficient to stress rule engines. The other one just matters. 16 the guess took several minutes to run, and then now this matter 128 guess to 256 guess takes a few seconds to run, and now the time in milliseconds, I mean, you know, microseconds or something. So, but these. That he became a more and more uh, complex, inefficient rules just to test a rule engine. See how long would it take to deal with inefficiencies? Unfortunately, programmers don't program the rules. I mean, the rule engines are not as clever as they think, right? Because they're kind of being greedy by making all these instantiations before they need them, right? And there's other non greedy or different kind of greedy algorithms, right? That are more lazy and they probably <coughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, this particular rule can be handled more efficiently with a lazy interpreter. Uh, that's not always the case. Oh, yeah. uh, well, at least I uh, think that we went from, we went from uh, a reading uh, rule engine to uh, what they have now, which is the lazy Data driven to goal uh, driven. We went from data driven to goal driven. Yeah, and it's lazy. Like, it's far more, it's much faster on, on the same benchmark. Mm -hmm. the benchmark yeah. well, I don't know, I've not run it on those benchmarks. So. Uh, well, I've I benchmarked it. Okay. It uh, is faster. Yeah. Uh, so, that, yeah, there are some uh, lazy engines out there, but most of all, I think all of the major right now are still using a 3D engine. So, this, uh, this is really relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so here's the you know, look at one more statistic. I mean, Thirty-eight million instantiations require six thousand four. It's 
second Lord Fan, or your three million and five hundred and fifty six Well, okay, here's a here's an attempt to fix that. Instead of finding every instantiation, let's just let's fix the rule so that it only finds one at a time. And we'll go into this too much of uh, people who have program rules at this point will recognize this is the uh, You're finding one jump with certain features and we're saying the system should not contain another jump with those same features and this div um, base point should not be lower than the base point jump. In other words, there's nothing lower than the base point jump, so the jump is the lowest possible base point. Here's a second attempt. As I said before, this rule originally had a very important value, so it basically it goes in. Um, the much better style is to use something called MEA to take advantage of the conflict resolution. And in, in this, instead of changing the stage explicitly to say that we want to jump to a new stage, we had basically do a separate call by determining the new stage. Uh, well, it used to stand for the intense analysis, but it doesn't really stand for anything anymore. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we, we uh, insert a new stage, and then we have to make a corresponding change. And the original rules, uh, at the end of doing a bunch of things, there was a, basically a go to the back to the top. So we, you know, update the stage and uh, set the value to length so we go back to the before we work. Uh, this one, which is, you know, we're finished with the subroutine, we just delete the stage and the zip code on the top of the subroutine. So uh, this, this rule originally had to know what was going to happen after, after the fire. In this case, it only has to know that it's, everything is going to be Here's the result of this. Um, okay. The time now has dropped uh, 22 seconds down to about 9 seconds. That's good. The number of the compared number of transients is created and the time required are all identical. So this, this is basically as good as you can do for these rules. And Java profiler again. Uh, this seems to have worked because the, you know, the two extensive rules are 
not anywhere at the top of the list of expensive girls. Uh, and if you're, of course, if you're still not fast enough, you go after these things to say what they should have done. Here's a summary of all the results for the, the, uh, the single world start losing three times. Uh, you can say it started out pretty bad, something like 77 million operations. And it actually got kind of worse with the first thing we tried. But then the second thing, third time. Uh, so this you're using in the third and also the second thing plus the third thing? No, no, I no. dropped out the second thing entirely. Okay, so, then not, you, so you took out the negation yeah, the condition right. but just changed the update to uh, insert the lead. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, anyway, just want to show that these things are not so opaque as they might seem at first glance. Okay, this is using an Intel processor, so I use the, uh, an Intel hardware profiler. Uh, other, other vendors have similar things. Uh, you had an AMD processor, you can use the AMD code XL. Uh, and, okay, modern processors are really pretty amazing. Uh, this is a uh, but this is not even a, a, an expensive one. This is, this is actually on a laptop, but still the processor has the ability to do things like this. You can decode and issue uh, at least four, up to four instructions on each clock. And in ideal circumstances, you can also retire up to four instructions on each clock. Uh, what this means is you can perceptually think the processor is having the front end and the back. The front end uh, locates the instructions that they have a variable in front of it. It locates the instructions and converts them into a micro instruction, which it passes to the back end. It's not always a one to one translation, but you know, sometimes it has to produce more than one micro instruction. But on the other hand, sometimes it can there's a couple of real instructions in the micro So uh, we don't have to pay too much attention between the real instructions and micro instructions. So uh, anyway, issue an instruction means it's passed to the back end. And you have the back end and you have over 200 instructions that are currently an issue. But we track all those instructions. Keep track of the dependencies between the instructions. And 
when all the dependencies are satisfied by that, that instruction can be executed, there's a result that's a free packet. So we need to go into other instructions. Uh, and so this current generation can have uh, more than 200 such instructions applied at the same time. This can include instructions that are doing operations, like uh, addition, multiplication, uh, instructions that are accessing memory. So you can have uh, not 300, but you can have almost 100 instructions in this life that are reading and writing memory and keep track of all the dependencies of Windows and uh, it's the right writers. The reason for doing all this is so that you can hopefully execute more than one instruction for the block. And, okay. The uh, B10 amplifier can read various hardware, uh, the hardware probes to uh, determine what's going on in the processor and say how close you're getting to this kind of uh, goals. So, um, here is the very simplest thing that it will tell you. I just asked it to give an overview. Uh, I ran the uh, program, I just had it loop and ran it for uh, 222 seconds until I got tired.
so if we sent you know, the current one to the next one. And then we extract some information from the top. We get the object that it refers to, the hash value, because that's what what the main thing we can look at. And then uh, we uh, set the next pointer for the next time we loop. We're doing all of this together because these are all accesses to the same thing, and when it brings it into the cache, you know, the first one is expensive, but the other two should be here for me. There's the actual test here uh, inside this track block. If you know, we look at the hash value, if it's what we're looking for, uh, then you know, we do this call to the test class. The test class contains the test that we're going to use to apply to one of these two targets. Uh, okay, well, just looking at this, my intuition would say that uh, this abstract function. I did call it here. It's, uh, it's going to be expensive. The rest of the stuff looks pretty. It's not that cool. uh, But in fact, you can go down, look at things on a line by line basis, and it turns out that almost all the time is spent in this. This is fixed. Uh, this is this code that's been arranged to minimize the stuff that might just cross the line. Uh, that, that is the fix. Well, it's the, the fix for Java. <laughs> As I say on every occasion when I get a chance, if I was using C, I could do a lot better. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. but, um, but this old so loss? Yeah. So you can go one the How many of the seconds you were you, you, you looking for? Oh, well, I don't know. I just ran for, um, yeah, again, I just ran until I got tired. I think it was 222 seconds or something like that. No, but, but how many, you know, in this while that you look at the token and then you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I have other information available, but I, I didn't look at it. So I can't but one way would be to, to just go and, I mean, that's always the most consuming, you know, the serialization of that part is the most consuming, uh, you know, expensive operation. So if you were to go and allocate a pool up front of all these objects and then just sign them up, it would be, it would be order magnitude faster. Well, okay, now the problem is uh, you're both going to overflow the caches. Uh, you could do some fetch ahead. Like I actually did quite a few fetch ahead if I was working in a language that gave me uh, access to the processor. But you can't you can't put everything in the cache because you know, the cache has a finite capacity. Right, no, no. I mean, I, you just go and grab a chunk of memory out oh. front, pull it, and then that operation, then it's not oh, I'm sorry, allocate. I didn't, you know. didn't make that clear. This is actually coming from memory. This is the overhead of actually accessing it from memory or bringing it to the processor. Uh, the modern processors, memory access time is two, three, four hundred uh, you know, times the 
times slower than the processor. In other words, right. that's at 200 or 300 or 400 processor cycles to bring one thing out of the memory. Charles, what, any, was there anything different with using the tool with Java as opposed to C and garbage collection or anything? Any advice? Okay. Um, it, I found some kind of strange stuff with it. Sometimes if you can actually go down to lower level, but this might have the, uh, uh, the assembly code. And I'm going to give you that on the assembly code. Machine instruction on machine instruction basis. And if you line up the machine instructions with the, uh, the Java code, you'll see that it sometimes makes mistakes. So you, you have to look, you know, I don't know if it does the same thing as C. I suspect it does not. But it does, you know, it's not 100% accurate with Java. You have to, you have to look at the code and make sure that things the thing are lining up the way they should not. I don't have to do anything special to the, uh, uh, you know, the V10 amplifier understands Java. And, you know, uh, when you run the Java program, it, uh, it knows how to handle it, how to, uh, uh, you know, how to get the code that's produced by the chip. Have you tried doing this with the Eclipse RP stuff that you have, or anything like that to see stuff? Okay. Um, well, I haven't, but yeah, I'd like to, um, but of course there's no, uh, except for intellectual amusement. Yeah, I'm not selling this part to it. Oh, it's fine, but you had a chance to look at the sea side of it. Okay, uh, we have this presentation available online. Uh, thank you, Charles. We will be looking.